Hi from Lauderdale by the Sea, Florida, place dear to my heart. Many vacations with my parents and siblings here through the years. I grew up going down the street a little bit uh, to Hollywood, Florida, while my grandparents were alive or not in the rough stages of very old age. So I'm, uh, in, in my mind at least, committing to doing something uh, for the indefinite future called the Sunrise Report, which is very easy to do here in South Florida. We have a lot of settings. And the Sunset Report, which is a little more of a challenge because obviously the Atlantic Ocean faces east from here, but uh, that's not the point. Uh, and I may have some stuff during the daytime hours as well. Uh, you've been wondering what I've been up to since I was doing a lot for RSBN, especially during the time running up to Election Day. Uh, and then I did a news show for them somewhat. I don't think the future is with RSBN, but we're not going to get into that. But I think some of you wanted to see me on uh, some sort of program. And we'll be doing that for a little over 20 minutes here. The sun is scheduled, and it's pretty reliable to rise on schedule. Uh, at 6.55 a.m. here in Lauderdale by the Sea, Florida, which is just north of Fort Lauderdale. Whether we actually see a sunset or not, hey, it's worth tuning in for that because look at the cloud covering back there. It may break, it may not. I tried to do something like this yesterday in uh, Pahokee, uh, which is the very western part of Palm Beach County on Lake Okeechobee. It started raining a few minutes before the sun was supposed to set, uh, and it was getting cloudy a little bit before that, so there was no sunset. But um, it's just amazing to me what opportunities the um, general, very general, media situation is creating right now in terms of technology. I am by myself right here. I am using my iPhone. I know I'm probably going to need to get a windscreen. Uh, I hope they make them for the microphone, which I left in the car, but time is of the essence now. Uh, and I'll deal with that issue. Bear with me on that. I'm talking as loudly as I can. It will get fixed. And the other thing that's nice about doing, well, let me backtrack a little bit, talk about the technology. There, I can basically have a studio equivalent program. Once I get the technology right, once I get a little more comfortable with this, I can basically have a, this was unthinkable a couple years ago. I mean, no one was even on Facebook Live a year ago. But I can basically do a broadcast from the beach by myself using a couple boxes and a $20 tripod and my iPhone. You know, if the money comes in, I will upgrade a little bit, but for now that's how I'm doing it. And now we're seeing a lot right now, you see the dinosaur media, whatever you want to call it, yeah, there's a bias issue, definite bias issue that those of us who are big Trump fans recognize. But that's one issue with the new media right now. Another is just the technology makes it possible for, to sort of break the, not monopoly, but oligarchy, the media oligarchy. Anyone can broadcast. Now, that means that there's a lot of mediocre stuff out there. Uh, anyone can basically go set up a camera and uh, start talking into the camera from their bedroom, wherever. Uh, they can build a little studio in some place like, I don't know, Mississippi, Louisiana, pick some southern state, um, and call yourself a big time network. Uh, but the reality is, uh, you know, there's not much visual going on there. I mean, most of us aren't so good looking that, uh, you know, it's worth just watching us, you know, doing essentially a radio show uh, and talking uh, and probably not as well as Rush Limbaugh or Howard Stern, the real champions in that department who I use as role models to some extent. And you can call it the insert name here show and not giving anyone any really great things to look at. That's why at least I'm cheating. I'm giving you a sunrise, hopefully, today, and a sunset. So even if you want to turn down the volume, you'll have something nice to look at. And essentially, I'm giving you my views on things, and I'm trying to actually do my homework ahead of time uh, and give you some content that's worth listening to. Where one can really add value is as an editor, uh, as a processor, really as a gatekeeper of the information that is out there. And there's so much out there. You could, you, you could use... Never go to sleep and not absorb all the information that put, people are putting at you uh, right now. It wasn't the case 30 years ago, obviously. So I see my role as uh, someone who will provide you something nice to look at in terms of me. I'm going to try to lose 20 more pounds, so at least I'm a little more acceptable to look at. And uh, Carol Shipley in uh, Kansas, you'll notice I shaved. So no comments about 5 o'clock shadow either. Um, give you something to look at, 
while I give you my opinion on things. I think that's the least I can do, and that's something that you're not going to find elsewhere, and that's why I'm putting myself in South Florida right now. When it's not February, I'll have a lot more options in that regard, but for now, I can go outside, not be like this the whole time, and give you something good. So let's talk about the issues of the day. It's 639 right now. I guess we have uh, 16 minutes till the sun rises, though I don't have to immediately uh, jump off here when the sun rises, but it'll be a few minutes after because then it's not going to be a good picture uh, by about 7 a.m. because uh, it'll be hard to look at. Uh, but for now, it should be pretty good. So let's look at uh, some notes I put together. Uh, I'm going to get sunglasses, so I will have a stylish pair, and then I can look down without seeming like I'm looking at my iPhone right here, my second iPhone, my old iPhone. Uh, the first one uh, is obviously the one that's filming this. Isn't the technology great if you use it the right way? So what I thought I'd do, I know Jim Hoft, who is the Gateway Pundit, and they, by the way, recently got White House credentials. Uh, so they're at the Trump press conference on a daily basis now, or whenever he holds them. And I'm going to go through the headlines since uh, sunset last night uh, in Florida, which was 6.15 over Lake Okeechobee. So I'll go over the headlines real quickly and then maybe give my opinions on them. Uh, that the sun, that the Daily Pundit put up as of at least an hour ago when I was last on my computer. Uh, starting with the one closest to sunset yesterday. Uh, that is, liberal media refused to report on illegal WikiLeaks emails, but report nonstop on illegal leak of Mike Flynn's phone calls. These again are from the Daily Pundit, Jim Hoft, and who I know, and who likes the idea of me doing some stuff where I'm processing his uh, information and talking about it. Uh, the second story is fake hate. Muslim Arab Usama Nazal arrested for painting F Arabs on garage door. Third headline, Wall Street Journal, intelligence officials are withholding information from President Trump. Uh, more recently than that, U.S. Senator admits America's hands are just as dirty as Russia's. Next story, update, two members of hashtag disrupt, disrupt J20 Exposed by Project Veritas undercover, undercover video. Oh, ugh, gotta pronounce it right. Let's start that again. Update: Two members of hashtag Disrupt J20 exposed by Project Veritas undercover videos have been arrested. That it wasn't perfect, but it'll do. Next up: 24 traffic boys rescued on Ghana's Lake Volta. Uh, second to most recent headline: Report. Obama has trained tens of thousands of radicals at Alinsky camps to sabotage Trump. Video. And then the most recent one, as of an hour ago at least, was Chelsea Clinton supports six-time deported, violent, convicted, criminal, illegal alien. Now, just any thoughts I have, you should read them yourself. Again, I'm not Zeus descending from uh, Mount Olympus to enlighten the world with my wisdom. Uh, I know that's the tone of a lot of people who do shows by themselves and call it a show. I'm not even calling this a show. It's just a report, just my opinion, and I'm not a reporter who is getting the original information on these stories. Let me make that perfectly clear. Uh, I'm just a guy at the beach. Um, so liberal media refused to report on illegal WikiLeaks emails, but re report nonstop an illegal leak of Mike Flynn's phone calls. Morning. How you doing? Uh... Want to come on a live stream, say a few words? Want to at least wave good morning? People walk the beach early in the morning. But the great thing, one great thing about Jim Hoft and what he does with the Gateway Pundit is that the headlines are accurate and they explain often, you don't even have to read the story and the stories are often very short and they're from other sources, I get it, but it's a comprehensive digest. Again, thegatewaypundit.com. Uh, that one pretty much says it all. Liberal media refused to report on illegal WikiLeaks emails, but report nonstop an illegal leak of Mike Flynn's phone calls. You knew what was going on during the election. You know, they would not talk about Hillary Clinton in a negative way, and uh, there was much resentment of that. But now, not that I watch the mainstream media, I haven't been turning it on the last few days, I've been doing other things, but I'm sure they're making it like a Watergate-type situation, like this is the worst thing that could happen. Will Trump's presidency survive? Yada, yada, yada. Next story, fake hate. Muslim Arab Osama Nazal arrested for painting F Arabs on garage door. 
this was in Toledo, Ohio, which is not that far from Detroit. And I believe uh, Toledo also has a disproportionately high Arab slash Muslim population. Uh, look, we know the stories mostly from college campuses about these fake hate crimes. I don't know what's going on psychologically that is making people want to do that kind of thing. I guess there's some appeal in feeling like a victim, but this is another example of that. What's interesting to me is there was, not that it's in the headline, a Nazi swastika put up there, which does have an element of irony. Do you know the stories about uh, World War II? Do you know how the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, which I believe was Yasser Arafat's uh, uncle, the way he uh, basically lived in Germany three years, he was pushing uh, Adolf Hitler uh, toward the final solution of the Jewish people. There was a lot of coordination there. So it's very ironic that uh, there would be a Nazi symbol on an anti-Arab fake hate crime. I mean, think about it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, there was a close relationship. Hitler said the one religion he does respect is Islam. Uh, not that all Arabs are Muslim, not that all Muslims are Arab, but it's just a little bit unusual. Google this. Uh, you can hit pause if you want. Google Hitler uh, Mufti of Jerusalem, and you'll see some pictures with really kind of border on bromance, if you know what I mean. Uh, next headline. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Intelligence officials are withholding information from President Trump. Now, that's the kind of thing Gateway uh, Pundit does very well. He provided some analysis there that uh, the Wall Street Journal, which was sort of in the never Trump uh, but Republican uh, camp just a few months ago, certainly this time last year, uh, maybe not quite February, but in the spring last year when it mattered, they added bias to this in a way that they probably would not have for another Republican candidate. Uh, they, make it, they made the story, and this is Jim Hoff, the Gateway Pundit's analysis here, uh, they made Trump look like an incompetent, bumbling fool. Go read the original article if you can, though it's a little hard with the Wall Street Journal because they uh, do have a subscription. Some of the articles are available, some are not. But go check out the Gateway Pundit on that one in particular because he does some analysis there. Good job with that, Jim. Uh, U.S. Senator admits America's hands are just as dirty as Russia's. He's talking there about the intelligence community. And uh, he is, uh, we're talking about Charles Grassley, a rather senior senator from Iowa. Uh, that's the senator who was talking about it. A Republican, a solid Republican, not a rhino. He's not out there every day with Lindsey Gramnesty and John McVean. But uh, there. Update two members of hashtag uh, Disrupt J20 exposed by Project Veritas undercover videos. I can't say that headline right. I don't know why. It's me. Uh, you got to get better at this. Let me try it once more. Update two members of hashtag Disrupt J20 exposed by Project Veritas undercover videos have been arrested. Straightforward enough. Look at the picture. Go back at the Gateway Pundit article. See it. One of the guys is exactly what you would expect. Uh, you know James O'Keefe is the guy who puts together these. He does so much great work. I don't know how he manages to remain undercover at this point, but they got exposed, they got arrested. We need a lot more like that because uh, in a story I'll get to, well, let me go to this one next. A report Obama has trained tens of thousands of radicals at Alinsky camps to sabotage Trump, and there's a video with that. Uh, look, it's self-explanatory. Organizing for action, Barack Obama is not going Quietly, He is hanging out in Washington, D.C., which is basically unprecedented to be a pain in Trump's ass. This is what the guy does. That's what a community organizer is. He got, look, he feels emboldened. He probably is testing the waters to see how much he can get away with, uh, whether Trump will uh, risk being charged, accused of racism, and uh, do anything about what Obama is doing. This is not the way a former president behaves, but he feels imperious. He feels immune from anything that could be consequences. But it's not just Obama doing this, of course. There's a whole network. Tens of thousands of people are being trained, or at least thousands. Maybe it's about 15,000 was the number in the article. And uh, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for the last article I was talking about, James O'Keefe and Project Veritas, to expose some of this stuff, see when they're breaking, their law, breaking the law, and people can, you know, be vigilant. And work with authorities, because these people are sloppy sometimes, even though if they, they get this six-week training course, it's exactly what uh, Michael Savage, who I'm a big fan of, if you know my stuff at all, the videos I edit and clip, I often put up a lot of Michael Savage clips with headlines that don't exist anywhere else on the internet, but 
Michael Savage calls them red diaper doper babies, and that's what these young hipsters often are. Uh, another article that was more recent on Gateway Pundit, 24 traffic traffic boys rescued on Ghana's Lake Volta. Look, slavery exists. I know it's Black History Month and we like hearing, and they, the people who promote that, like to talk about slavery 150, 200 years ago, but there's slavery still going on right now. It doesn't matter because the white man, the evil white man isn't involved, but there's a big fishing industry. Often these boys are nine, 10. They're essentially slaves. What's the difference between uh, being a slave in America and a slave on a fishing boat? Obviously, I guess you might be more likely to get seasick on a fishing boat, but there's slavery in Africa. Uh, this isn't sex slavery, which President Trump has been doing a lot about already, just a month into office, but they were rescued by an organization that does very good work. And the last, uh, or the most recent, of the Gateway Pundit stories since sunset uh, is that Chelsea Clinton supports six-time deported, violent, convicted, criminal, illegal alien. And this is the so-called woman in Texas. I'm hearing that it may be a man who dresses as a woman, the so-called transgender type. I don't know, but there's much more to the story. Uh, Jim gets into it there. I only briefly looked at it. Chelsea Clinton's a pain in the ass. Like, I don't know if she's trying to do a political career or whatever. She has no charisma. There's nothing she came up with while making $700,000 on NBC that's as good as this video I'm doing at the beach. Let's be honest here. And this video needs a lot of work. I'm just getting started with doing this kind of thing. And I'm not polished at all. And I'm still better than anything Chelsea Clinton came up with during her NBC money laundering scheme to just put more money in the Clinton's pockets. Uh, but yeah, she's trying to have it both ways. She's trying to seem ideological. She doesn't mention the other things. Do you think she'd mention anything about uh, the de deportations that occurred under other presidents, including her father, but will never be under her mother <laughs> um, under Obama? No, she's trying to make herself relevant. She retweeted something from that Organizing for America, Barack Obama shadow government group, some big big shot in there. This is Chelsea Clinton. She's trying to make a name for herself, trying to be relevant. Neither her nor her husband, Mark Mizvinsky, uh, who seems to take breaks from the marriage uh, with some frequency. Uh, he goes on little trips. Uh, his head fund closed down, so neither of them actually work right now. But hey, they're Democrats. They get all that money. Uh, Clinton Foundation... You know, maybe she does have a part-time job with the Clinton Foundation. I don't know. It's all bogus. Uh, she gets money from a lot of countries that eventually makes it to her through the Clinton Foundation that treat women rather poorly. She never seems to talk about that, but her heart just bleeds for this so-called woman in El Paso who's being deported, who had been deported, I think, eight times earlier, who had broken the law, uh, who was in court for a reason related to her breaking the law. This is what they do. This is what they do. We got to call them out. And uh, she uses words. She throws around adjectives, uh, disgusting, sickening, uh, which are often a substitute for thought. By the way, Mike Closer, I watched your Periscope video. You do that a little too much, too. You know, you just can't keep saying it's sickening. It's disgusting. It's a cop out. You got to give a little more analysis than that. OK, it's 652. I think we're three minutes from the sunset. Let me take a look and just see if we're going to get one. It's not looking good for that. Sorry, it's not my fault. Um, but I am going to share a few Facebook posts and just read them that I think are worth discussing uh, by intelligent people. I, again, try to be a filterer. I'm not pretending my opinion is sacrosanct, that there aren't people who come up with better stuff than I do out there. But someone needs to collate it. And that's the, that seems to be my primary role or where I think I can add most value besides providing you with a pretty sunrise if it actually occurs sometime. So these are just some excellent comments on Facebook. I could do this with Twitter too from the last day or so and I'll probably close with that. Uh, this is from Rabbi Joseph Isaac Korf just down the road a little bit in Hollywood, Florida. He's a Chabad rabbi there. Uh, great point he makes. In conjunction with my nephew's comment, which I don't have here, let me add if Flynn emailed the Russian ambassador out of his closet, that should, end, that should end the investigation. Perhaps we should have sent him out on the Sunday morning news shows to lie. Then the Democrats would believe him. Obviously, that's a reference to Susan Lutt Rice, former national security advisor, and the way she blatantly lied, saying that the Benghazi attacks uh, were related to a disgusting video, whatever. 
all of which was a lie, but the media didn't care about that. Uh, a report from a guy, a comment by a guy who I think is a Democrat, who I barely know, met him years ago, but I'm Facebook friends with him. I don't know if he wants his name mentioned, but I think it was an excellent way of writing this. He wrote from Fort Lauderdale, ah, just down the street, really just down the street, closer than Hollywood. He wrote, I know Facebook isn't supposed to be a place where anyone has a favorable comment of Trump, but you, if you are a Jew and or Zionist, you have to be very happy with his position on Israel and the Jewish people after his press conference with Netanyahu, which of course was yesterday, uh, as well as his concern for, for Iran's aggression, areas where Obama received an F grade from me. Great point, but I'm still waiting to see if uh, what Trump actually does as opposed to what he says. I don't like the way he is sort of criticizing, like previous presidents, Israel for so-called settlements settlements in Judea and Samaria, and let's see if he actually moves, moves the embassy to Jerusalem. A big deal. We'll check his sincerity there. It's not happening so far. Paul Polnick, who I'm sure is fine with his name being used, a very smart Jewish guy in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Good cartoonist, too. He has, he's somewhat famous out there in Columbus. Israel and America are closer today than ever before. Thank you for your sincere friendship, President Trump. Thank you to all our friends for standing strong with the state of Israel. Latest polls show that Israel has the support of just over 64% of the American public, with 18% having no opinion or being neutral. How great is America? How truly wonderful are the American Christians who support the only Jewish state on earth? America's soul is courageous, strong, and great again. Jack Posobiec, who has a huge Twitter following, he's well known, worked closely with Roger Stone, he was very much uh, in the public eye during the election. Just a short thing, ironic, he has a great sense of humor. Uh, he wrote 12 hours ago, or maybe a little bit more than that by now, he wrote, if the intel community is so concerned with foreign influence on U.S. officials, then where are the Huma Abedin wiretaps? Mickey Davis, who was a woman, wrote this, I guess, about 11 hours ago. More about the Netanyahu visit, which just wasn't in the Gateway Pundit stories I talked about. She wrote, and back to the two-state solution. So she's going to be a little more critical of President Trump there. Oh, 656. Nope, didn't happen. And back to the two-state solution. When the Arabs continue to say that they will not allow Israel to exist, that they continually treat the Israelis as the enemy, that they send rockets over Israel, that they send suicide bombers, knife wielders, trucks aimed at Israeli pedestrians, and that they continue to teach five-year-old children how to hate and kill Israelis, how can a two-state solution even sound doable? They had their chance at least three times, once with Arafat at the Oslo Accords, and they never obeyed the agreements. How can they reach an agreement to share the country? Even though the settlements were halted for 10 months, there was no sign of acquiescence to cease their attacks on Israel. Is everyone that stupid? God help my people. I guess uh, Mickey Davis is Jewish. Uh, Davis can be a Jewish name. It's not typically a Jewish name. I don't know. I've never met you, Mickey, but you write very well on Facebook. Uh, I guess Al Davis is Jewish, uh, former owner of the Oakland Raiders, uh, one of the many Jewish owners uh, in the National Football League, and I believe he played in the American Football League or in the NFL at some point. Uh, so, you know, very, one of the very few Jewish players, but Jewish owners are well represented. I think there are 10 of them right now, including the two in the Super Bowl. And Robert Kraft, by the way, does more than anyone else for Israel. So congratulations again to the Patriots for winning the Super Bowl. Okay, more from Rabbi Joseph Isaac Korf. I guess he published, published this about 10 p.m. last night. Um, he wrote, this is not so much related to Israel, but the future of America here. This is again the rabbi at Chabad of Hollywood, just a few miles from here. I really don't want to get into depth about this, but does anyone have a sense of dark foreboding? There is a horde of Islamism overrunning the globe. We are allowing them in and giving them the freedom to insinuate themselves into the American and European cultures. Slowly, they're overwhelming the country. No one is going to their countries. No one is allowed into their countries, let alone to freely practice their religions, but we are not doing the same. Now, I'm not getting into the rights or wrongs uh, and what we should do other than calling your attention to the facts. Those who dare to call our attention to these facts and dare to tell the truth are shouted down, called vile names, ostracized, and violated. Even though some of these populists have the support of majorities or at least large segments of their populations, there's no actual debate, just denigrate. 
It's slash and burn at all costs, even though they merely wish to protect their countries from these refugees and aliens who can destroy their cultures and countries. I don't know yet for sure what to do. I'm asking and wondering what to do. I'm also wondering if there's anything we can do. I'm wondering. And by the way, I responded to Rabbi Kor uh, that we should do another segment like we did a few days ago, uh, like we did last week about the Torah reading, but we went on many other topics. I'm saying what we should do is we should make another video, even though it's on the phone. So hopefully I'll have that for you very soon. A guy named Michael Benjamin. Uh, I don't know if he wants this on Facebook or not, but look, you publish it on Facebook. Your name's on it. As long as I cite you, it's okay to mention it. I mean, I'm going to just assume that if I don't know you. Um, great point he makes at about 1 a.m. Eastern time. Scenario. It's 3 a.m. and someone is beating on your front door saying they are having car trouble and need help. If you don't immediately, immediately let that person in your house, regardless of any potential risk to your spouse and children, then you are a hypocrite, and your refugee argument is irrelevant. If you won't risk the safety of your family, don't assume to risk my family's safety for the sake of your own bull s moral convictions. And then finally, one last one. This is going to be the last thing I read from, uh, again, from Rabbi Joseph Isaac Korf, I guess at around 11 p.m. Eastern Time last night. All these are on Facebook. Oh, by the way, did everyone forget that HRC, Hillary Rodham Clinton, and Obama sold our uranium to Russia? Just incredible. Nothing. Nada. Crickets. There are the patriots, and Trump is the traitor. Why isn't the administration saying this and getting this out, getting this out there head on? By the way, tune in, Trump administration. Tune in. I'm going to contact one person I know in the Trump administration and make sure she sees this point and passes it on, even though she's in the Department of Protocol. Uh, but back to what Rabbi Korf was saying, why aren't they smock, smacking Congress over their collective GOP heads? Debs, Dems never get out of, like, no matter what. I don't know what he means. That must be a typo. They goose step, uh, interesting choice of words, they goose step in synchronicity and, isn't it in sync? Uh, yeah, in synchronicity. Uh, and no one in the media says a word. Now the media is worked up in a lather. And we're just going to let them skate on all their fake news and lies? Folks, wake up. Smell reality and speak up. And that is my last Facebook post. I have some other material I definitely think you should read by a guy who, brilliant guy I went to law school with, uh, a long thing he wrote on Facebook, to Facebook. I don't like the term rants, but that's what you know them as. I'll get to them later. Maybe I'll do a midday report. Also, some stuff from themarket-ticker.org. Again, there's so much information out there. Uh, I'm going to try to direct you. You only have so much time to the stuff that's most worth most worthwhile. You're not obligated to watch anything out there, but might as well spend your time on the stuff that's most worthwhile. I'm not claiming I'm the most brilliant thinker out there. I'm trying to filter information so you know where to get good information, maybe through me. Uh, I apologize, though it's not my fault, that there's not a sunset, sunrise. It's certainly not going to be a sunset. Maybe I'll have better luck later today with a sunset. I'll try to come to you with midday with more useful information, quality stuff that I filter and bring to you. My thing is, I don't have contempt for my audience, if I have much of an audience. Uh, I'm trying to build an audience, and the way you do that is treating them with respect and treating their time as if it's valuable to them. And I'm not treating you as just a source for ad revenue from YouTube. Uh, this will go on YouTube with a little editing uh, after it's on Facebook Live now. So there you go. Hope you found this worthwhile little, you know, I got to polish it a little bit or I got to get used to it, but I'm committed to bringing you good information while having something to look at. Thanks for watching.